Last night, we had some heavy rain on the Central Coast, even a little snow up in the mountains. But on my drive this morning, there's a lot of water on the roadways, and I actually hydroplaned like five or six times. Part of the reason for that is I definitely need to get some new tires, and that's on the to-do list. But it did just get me thinking, is there anything else that relates to hydroplaning? Is there anything else I could do to reduce the chances of that happening? And I started to look into this, and it actually turns out there's an entire science behind it, and even an, an equation that predicts when you're going to hydroplane. So we can just dive into the science here. We'll go to Meteorology Insider, how to avoid hydroplaning, understanding the science behind it. So if it, have you ever been driving on a rainy day and suddenly felt like you were gliding on a sheet of ice? About five or six times this morning. Uh, this terrifying experience is called hydroplaning, and it occurs when a vehicle loses contact with the road due to a layer of water between the tires and the pavement. In this blog post, we will explain the science behind hydroplaning and give you tips on how to avoid it. So I've heard there's a few different things that can play into hydroplaning, things like your how new your tires are, the tread that they have, and then also the tire pressure. And then I'd also imagine how much rain is falling and how much water is on the roadways. See if some of those end up being true. So the science of hydroplaning, when a car is driving on a wet road, the tires are supposed to push the water out of the way and maintain contact with the pavement. However, if the speed is too high or the tires are not properly inflated, the water cannot be dispersed and the car loses contact with the road. This results in a loss of control and can lead to accidents. So I think this makes sense if you just think about the shape of a tire. If it's super inflated, think of it as a perfect circle. Maybe it's only in contact two to three inches with the ground. So you only have to be dispersing, I'm gonna use exaggerations here, dispersing two to three inches worth of water. But then if your tire is a bit more square-like because it's not inflated enough, that would maybe have to disperse five to six inches of water. That's more, that's going to be harder to do, so it increases your chances that there's going to be a layer of water between your tire and the road, which is what leads to hydroplaning. So just continuing on, engineers have developed an equation that predicts the speed at which a car will hydroplane based on tire pressure. The equation is V equals 10.35 times square root P, where V is the speed in miles per hour and P is the tire pressure in pounds per square inch. This means that cars with underinflated tires are more likely to hydroplane as they have less contact with the road. So just going back over that, V, which is the speed your car is going, equals 10.35, it's some kind of constant, times square root P, which is your tire pressure. So right off the bat, if, if you think anything like I do, I'm thinking, okay, if I inflate my tires more, I can drive faster without hydroplaning. But the correct way to think about this is probably it's less safe to have deflated tires so you should make sure you check your tire pressure consistently and then drive the correct speed limit. So just continuing here, how to avoid hydroplaning. The best way to avoid hydroplaning is to slow down in wet conditions. Well said, very diplomatic. This will reduce the amount of water that the tires need to disperse, allowing them to maintain contact with the pavement. That makes sense. Like if you think about it, if you're walking through rain, you get hit with like a little bit of rain, but if you're running through rain, you're actually getting hit by more rain per second. So the same would be true for your tires trying to disperse water. If you're going slowly, it's dispersing maybe that much water, but if you go very quickly, it has to disperse that much water. So additionally, it is important to ensure that your tires are properly inflated. You can check your tire pressure using a gauge, which can be purchased at any auto parts store. Another way to prevent hydroplaning is to make sure that your tires have adequate tread depth. This is also one of my big problems. It's getting pretty worn down at this point. Tread helps to channel water away from the tire, allowing it to maintain contact with the road. If your tires are worn down, they will be less effective in wet conditions and more prone to hydroplaning. So it's the treads that are able to kind of channel the water away from your tire. Whereas if it's very flat, it increases the chances that the water is just going to be able to build up underneath the tire. So if you want to start, if you do start to hydroplane, 
It is important to remain calm and avoid slamming on the brakes or making sudden turns. Instead, take your foot off the accelerator and gently steer in the direction that you want to go. This will help the tires regain contact with the road. It's actually a little bit like, if anybody's a skateboarder out there, sometimes if you're going down a hill, you can kind of slide your wheels out for a second and then you can just slowly bring them back. But you don't wanna be making like quick herky jerky movements. That would just be a guaranteed way to fall or in this case, have your car go out of control. So conclusion, hydroplaning can be a scary experience, but understanding the science behind it can help you avoid it by driving slower in wet conditions, checking your tire pressure, and ensuring that your tires have adequate tread depth, you can reduce your risk of hydroplaning. Remember, if you do start to hydroplane, stay calm and avoid making sudden movements. With these tips in mind, you can stay safe on the road, even in wet conditions. So basic summary here, there's three main factors that lead to you hydroplaning. If you're going fast, there's going to be more water that you're going to have to disperse. If your tires aren't inflated enough, there's going to be more water that you'll have to disperse. And then finally, there was one more here, and then also tread depth. If you have very worn down tires, the tread isn't going to disperse as much water, so then there's a better chance that you get a layer between your tire and the pavement. So the whole idea here is you're trying to disperse water as much as you can between your tire and the pavement because if you don't then you end up on a layer of water it almost acts like ice and you start to slide out of control in that case you don't want to make any sudden movements you want to stay calm and then just try to bring it back in so hopefully you learned something throughout this video i know i certainly did on my to-do list is to get some new tires get that tread depth i'm also going to inflate them and then i'll also make sure that i drive slowly thanks for watching